Okay, coming right back. Episode 4 of What Makes This Album Bad, or whatever it's called. We're going to jump over to a different project. Um, Survivor's Guilt by Voicide. Now, Voicide is my... My baby. All my projects are my baby, but... Voicide is the one that nobody touches. If if I'm allowing you to touch it, that is a privilege. Um, it is the project where I explore more rockish, I mean, popish by my standards. You have to understand, I'm just trying to make pop music, okay? And I'm really bad at it, and this is the result. <laughs> so, Voicide is like gothy, alty kind of melancholic it's, it's catatonia but it's got like a little bit of uh, post-hardcore to it but it's kind of got a gothy edge to it yeah um so survivor's guilt this was another one that i was i was really proud of and i was like <sighs> Going into it, I was like, this is the one where I'm going to release it and I'm actually just going to chill for a while because the problem was I made Liturgy and I knew at the time, like, Liturgy is going to be amazing and I don't really need to do much else after that. And then I had a couple of ideas for what ended up becoming For the Days Lost. And it's not like I regret making that, but For the Days Lost was such a game changer, especially... Um, so far from the light from a production and writing standpoint to this day I don't know how I did that and it's going to be really fun to talk about that one but as a follow up Survivor's Guilt was kind of weird because I was trying to make songs that had nuance and had emotional impact but were still coherent and concise. I was really trying to just like laser focus the sound and like cut away all of the fat and just like, okay, if I just want to show a project to somebody who doesn't know what I do, I want it to be this album. I want to make sure that every chorus hits hard and that the songs are memorable, that the vocal performances are bang on, and that it sounds like a real band, I guess. And the thing about this album that haunts me more than anything else is that I think I just failed to achieve that. I think that's what it really comes down to, is like, the songs really aren't that memorable, and that sucks because I was actually trying, and usually I'm not trying that. Um... Curator has a memorable chorus. Multiple people have told me that. That's awesome. That's good. Um, But it's like, okay, without looking, there is space between words, which has a good chorus, but the buildup is so boring that it's just kind of like, who cares by the time it gets there? Um, And the structure is too short to really get the, the full meat of it. Curator, Save the Sorrow, that one I thought would be a banger, and I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with it, something's wrong with it though, um, I like it, I guess that's like, uh, do I like it, I don't know man, it, it didn't hit like I thought it did man, um, there was like, there was like Push, that was a weird song, All In, and like, I don't think that chorus is good, the the song as a as an exercise is fine it's interesting it's not very good um oh right the loveless lullaby featuring fathom also i mean like he's an amazing singer and we had a lot of fun with the vocal arrangements but that song also just it was the la- it was the last minute thing and it wasn't mixed super well and I ended up actually making a mix change after the album was out because it was that fucked up because I rushed it just because I was sick of the album and that sucks that song definitely haunts me I think usually I skip it 
<laughs> not because it's it's bad, but because I, I mixed it really bad, and I just couldn't get the levels on that one, so like the, the levels of the instruments do sound noticeably off. And then Survivor's Guilt, the title track. That's a great song. That's like, I don't know, I'm, I'm really proud of that one because that has like that dark black metal-ish energy to it, and there isn't really a chorus chorus <laughs> but that fails at what my goal was of making a concise more or less contemporary thing that I can show people um yeah production wise with voice side stuff I really try to scale down I, I don't try to make it modern I try to make it sound warm and authentic and as real as it possibly can um i i don't try to make the guitar tones sound contemporary or modern at all i make them sound the way i want them to um which tends to be a marshall silver jubilee for whatever reason i really like the sound of that amp i don't even want to like it i just do sometimes a 5150 but yeah and and pickiness with cabs you know um the production on it was a little more squished and a little more scooped than For the Days Lost. I still think For the Days Lost sounds better. It sounds so warm and so real. I don't know. Because I'm using like the same sample. It's all sampled drums. Liturgy has real drums. But anyway, we're not talking about that yet. <laughs> we're talking about Survivor's Guilt. Um, and like the its twin, its evil twin, Project Technophage, I cut songs off of this one too. There's a song called Nightmares... Um, and what was the other one? And there was another one. And basically I gutted both of those songs and took the best parts together to make Loveless Lullaby, which is why that song sounds fucking soulless. And then there was, there was another one. Um, uh, there was one called Speak, which was like, really more punkish it was like kind of more pushing afi um like a really upbeat borderline two four time <laughs> and i ended up cutting it just because it didn't sound like me writing it it sounded like afi at their happiest you know which is definitely not voyicide um and as a result i think it's a little short I kind of wish there was like one or two more songs on it, but I was super out of ideas. I'm still out of ideas. Um, I'm going to kind of have to reinvent what I do, but it's fine. Again, from a technical perspective, I think the worst offenses are the leveling in, lo in Loveless, the vocal production on Loveless. I think... I was pretty meticulous about the vocals and everything else. So that song really sticks out to me. It's it's kind of the thorn in my side of this album um, because I was very meticulous about everything. All the vocal leveling is on point. Um, I think all the guitar tones and leveling, they all sound different because I use different overdrives and signal chains for the majority of these songs. But I, I, I leveled them together decently. And you can tell, like, especially going between songs two and three, going from Save the Sorrow to Curator, like, the Curator guitars are way different. They're way more mid push, they're way louder. Um, I don't know. I think it sounds okay. I, I think that consistency would have been hard to accomplish in music like this and that it doesn't really matter. Um, it's for the strength of the songs, and like playing those like super ugly black metal chords in Survivor's Guilt, the title track, with a lighter signal chain would have not sounded great either, so it's fine. Um, bass production is on point. <laughs> bass in Survivor's Guilt sounds fucking amazing. Um... The only thing I succeeded in achieving, I think, was my vocal performances. I'm really happy with that on the album. But it, it, it just sucks because I don't think I've, in recent history, failed quite so spectacularly at accomplishing my goal. 
keep in mind, I don't usually have a goal like that. Um, <clears throat> you know, with design abstract or whatever, if my goal is to write the fucking most complicated, craziest, heaviest fucking shit, you know, like with, with ethereal void, like just to, to write the grooviest, chunkiest, heaviest, most dissonant shit. It's like, like uh, my goals with voice that are more nuanced and the music is more nuanced. And I don't think I accomplished that. And that sucks. None of the songs I can really point to and just be like, Hey, this, you know, if anything, I'd probably point people to hymns off of liturgy, which is crazy because that's not even the previous album. That's the one before it. And that should not be the case because like I improve at things way quicker than that. I shouldn't have to point two albums back. No, it is, it is a good thing because it means that I'm, I'm topping off. Like the fact that I can point to two albums ago and be like, this is good. That's awesome. I haven't experienced that. I'm really happy about that. I'm going to be happy when I get to talk about that. Um, it, it's nice that shit's kind of tapering off. I mean, it means that I'm not learning as quickly, but it means that I'm definitely coming into my own as a musician. That's awesome. That's fine. But what sucks is that I can't really point to any of the songs of Survivor's Guild and be like this, you know, because they're all like slow burns and nothing inherently wrong with a slow burn song, but I don't know. I, the, the payoff for those types of structures is not what I was expecting. I, it's so funny to say, but I genuinely thought I was just making like catchy hooky bangers, like absolute, like radio bangers because to me that's what they are because that's how far removed from that type of stuff I am like I listen to pop music but I can't write it I, I just cannot so yeah it's a it's a bit of a long one because voice side is a really interesting project because I really really pour everything into it like all of the not giving a shit in project technophage is me giving a shit about voice side. I'm, I'm so meticulous about like every detail, you know, um, the little niblets on my, can you see that? The little niblet thing fell apart. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so if I were to rate it on our scale where zero or one is it's cringe and if you like, it'll kill you. And 10 is there's literally nothing wrong with this. Um, this scale is going to be really boring because it's basically the newer it is, the higher it is, almost without fail. So it's like, I'd, I'd give Survivor's Guild like, it's like an 8 or a 9. Oh, I forgot about the intro. The intro is kind of weird. I had to just like roll off all the bass on it. Um, it's a little unfitting. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Um, it's like an 8.5. If you skip Loveless Lullaby, it's like a 9.5. <laughs> and again, that's not the fault of Vadim. He did his best with what he was working with, but that song was cobbled together. And though we had fun making it, I don't think it really sounds that good. And that's also just because I fumbled the mix on it because it was rushed. Um, like, be sure to like, be, be sure to like, subscribe and and 